This is Stephen Hoskin. On the 6th of July, 2006, Stephen was murdered. His body was found at the base of the St. Austell Railway Viaduct. Two people were found guilty of his murder, Darren Stewart, aged 29, and Sarah Bullock, aged 16. Martin Pollard, aged 21, was found guilty of manslaughter. Darren Stewart, the leader of this group, was already known to police for his criminal activities, and for having complex unmet needs of his own. He had targeted Stephen Hoskin because of his learning disabilities. Stephen desperately wanted friends, and so, accepted Darren Stewart and the group into his life and home, without recognizing the true exploitative nature of their friendship. Stephen's final hours of life were bleak in the extreme. He was tortured, forced to wear a dog lead, coerced into swallowing an overdose of paracetamol, and then made to leave his home and walk to the railway viaduct near his house. Darren Stewart then made Stephen climb over the safety rail, as Sarah Bullock kicked his face and stood on his hands. Stephen fell to his death. Investigations uncovered the fact that Stephen had made several calls and visits to a number of agencies, all of which should have alerted people to the danger of his situation and his vulnerability. Following the death of Stephen Hoskin, a serious case review, headed by Margaret Flynn, found a series of failings in joint working and information sharing. It seemed to me that every agency had a small piece of information, or even quite a large piece of information, but they looked at that information as though uh, it was disconnected from anything else. Um, and one of the principal findings of the Sears case review was that every agency had a piece of a jigsaw, but at no stage did they seek to discuss the piece that they held or the information or indeed the concerns that they had about Stephen's circumstances. I think each agency had such a strong sense of having failed a very vulnerable man. That's not to say that these agencies are entirely without merit or that they acted um, in a way that they, they knew of uh, the danger that Stephen was in. They, they did not see it coming. Um, so it had a, a very major impact on all services across sectors. Um, each individual agency, the ambulance service, the police service, social services, knew some of the issues that Stephen was facing but didn't talk to each other. But also, even within their own organisations, there wasn't good enough information sharing. So each individual call that Stephen would make, each individual incident was, was viewed as a one-off. And it was a failure to spot patterns um, that, that contributed in the end to his death. Safeguarding adults now comes under the CARE Act 2014. This reinforces the need for good communication, partnership working, and information sharing. Under Section 42.1 of the CARE Act, safeguarding duties apply to an adult who has needs for care and support, whether or not the local authority is meeting any of those needs, and is experiencing, or at risk of, abuse or neglect, and, as a result of those care and support needs, is unable to protect themselves from either the risk of, or the experience of, abuse or neglect. Unfortunately, research into the findings of safeguarding adult reviews, since the CARE Act, shows that the same problems persist. There have been a number of uh, safeguarding reviews, both before and after the implementation of the CARE Act, that highlight that uh, the case of Stephen Hoskin is not unique. That sadly, uh, hate crime, uh, disability hate crime, um, uh, the uh, murder uh, and oppression of people with learning disabilities and other kinds of disabilities continues. Research 
carried out by Professor Michael Preston Shute and Professor Susie Bray, into Safeguarding Adults Reviews, has identified a number of themes that remain problematic, including information sharing and joint working. So communication and collaboration emerges as, um, as, a, key, um, as a key issue. Part and parcel of that is, is information sharing. There are again good examples of information sharing um, that emerge from safeguarding adult reviews, but a consistent theme is a misunderstanding of the Data Protection Act 2018, a misunderstanding of uh, the legal rules, and specifically a failure to appreciate that Article 8 of the European Convention, the right to private and family life, is a qualified right, and that uh, both the Human Rights Act 1998 and the Data Protection Act 2018 uh, permit uh, the sharing of information without consent uh, when that is necessary. I think in the years since, you know, partly as a result of Stephen's death, you know, partly just gradual awareness of good practice, you know, arising sometimes from similar stories elsewhere, there has been progress. You, you do see an increasing number of multi-agency safeguarding hubs or mashes where, you know, police, social services, ambulance services are all in the same room together and are sharing that information more broadly. Still, however, I think, and Michael Preston Shute's review of kind of um, safeguarding adult reviews where, where things have gone wrong, it, um, it illustrates that there is still a tendency to work. I mean, he, he talks about parallel lines, you know, that, that each agency is working very well with someone, but they are working in parallel rather than joining up. I, I, I think joined up models of service delivery make this sort of information, you know, proper information sharing easier. They're, they're, they're not the whole solution, but a multi-agency safeguarding hub where people do feel confident about their right to see other people's, you know, other agencies' files, um, where um, leaders of organisations role model that joint working. I, I think that that has to be part of it. We, we, we do still need to get better at integrated, joined up working and information sharing around safeguarding cases. I think other recommendations d would in inevitably involve people genuinely understanding um, the, 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 the law around this, so a greater degree of legal literacy amongst social workers, police, ambulance um, drivers and so on. So that's legal literacy around the CARE Act and what that says about safeguarding legal literacy around the Mental Capacity Act, but also about, um, you know, s s some of the more um, tricky interventions that can be used, sort of using the inherent jurisdiction of the High Court, things like that, that I, th I think not enough people in the sort of safeguarding arena fully understand. So I think, you know, more training and awareness has got to be part of it. But just, you know, throwing one day's training or an e-learning course at people isn't going to do it. They're, they're, as I said, there needs to be that kind of senior leadership and, and the embedding of a culture whereby people will work jointly and will share information appropriately um, to, to make sure that people are kept safe as much as possible. And if there is one message that I would invite uh, listeners um, to take away, um, it is uh, convene the system, bring people uh, together. So convene the system, make sure that everybody uh, who has a contribution to make is there, make sure that the decisions are fully recorded, that somebody is responsible for overseeing uh, the plan and that there is a backup plan um, if plan A, as it were, um, doesn't um, work out. Margaret Flynn compared the information in Stephen Hoskins' case to pieces of a jigsaw. If we are to put the pieces together when working with people whose lives are complex, 
and risk is identified. Then all levels, within all partner agencies need to play their part. Key learning points, to improve practice. At a case level, ensure a key worker and lead officer are appointed. Agree a plan and a contingency. And put the person at the center of everything you do. At a frontline level, raise awareness about safeguarding among frontline workers, people using services, carers, and the public. Encourage vigilance, ensure everyone knows how to spot abuse and neglect. And publicize the contact details and ways of reporting concerns. At an operational level, Encourage an open culture in organizations. Promote positive working relationships and joint working across key sectors. And ensure managers understand information sharing law to enable them to share information with the right people at the right time. At a strategic level, develop local joint working strategies to enable effective information sharing and coordinated responses. Ensure accountability is clear, and a named lead officer is appointed in each key organization. And support from the Safeguarding Adults Board, for lead officers to ensure compliance with partnership duties, across sectors. Getting it right at strategic level, is absolutely key, to ensuring every other level, in each partner agency, is able to contribute to good multi-agency working.